EELs freak of nature but yet the delight of man. Eels are quite strange. The fact that they have long, snake-like bodies and fong-filled mouths makes many people scared of them. In actuality, eels are an essential component of a balanced aquatic ecosystem. They often have long, cylindrical bodies without scales, and some even have an additional pair of jaws in their mouths. In practically every body of water on the planet, from rivers and lakes to coral reefs and the deep ocean, eels can be found. Eels are an interesting collection of animals. Welcome to the Animal Chanel, the one channel for all the interesting animal facts around the globe. Ready to dive in? Let's go! We'll go over some fundamental information regarding eels. Eels are members of the Anguilliformes phylum. Eight suborders, 19 families, 111 genera, and more than 800 distinct species make up the Anguilliformes order. Eels are, to put it simply, highly diverse and plentiful. Bony fish called eels are known for their long, snake-like bodies. Typically, they only have pectoral fins, and any dorsal or anal fins that are present are fused to the caudal fin to create a structure resembling a ribbon running along the body. Eels do not have scales, in contrast to most fish. They can breathe on dry land for up to a few hours because of a protective mucus coating that covers their skin and can even store water. The sizes, color patterns, habits, food, and habitats of many eel species vary. The largest eels can reach lengths of more than 13 feet and weights of more than 250 pounds, 113 kilograms. The smallest eels are barely a few inches long and weigh just one ounce. Eels move across the water by wave-like motions of their body. They just reverse this motion to swim backward. The fact that mores have pharyngeal jaws is one of the most amazing things about eels. This is an additional pair of jaws that are thrust forward to grab and draw down anything the primary jaws have attached themselves to. These jaws reside further back in the throat. They are found in many fish, but what makes mores unique is that they have additional mouths that may extend considerably further than the average fish. Eels have needle-like, sharp teeth that face backward and sink into their prey to hold it there. They can carry and devour that prey without using their hands or paws because to their additional mouths. Eels lead somewhat inactive lives in general. Being nocturnal creatures, they spend the most of the day in their hiding place. They hunt in the dark. Depending on the species, eels have different hunting habits, with some functioning as ambush predators and others aggressively pursuing prey. Numerous species have been observed hunting in groups and even recruiting eels of different species to join them in hunting parties. Eels have even been observed hunting alongside other species, such as grouper. Fish, crustaceans, invertebrates, and other eels make up the majority of the food of a saltwater eel. Similar to saltwater eels, freshwater eels eat fish, crayfish, worms, smaller eels, and insect larvae. Particularly when they are adults, several eel species prefer to live alone. Others cluster in hundred strong groupings. Eels' reproductive system is still largely unknown. Many eels only mate and reproduce during the last stages of their lives, and then they perish. It is understood that eels go through four major life stages, from larvae to adults, and that there are distinct eel breeding sites spread out around the globe. Over 800 different eel species can be found all over the world. The 19 families that each of these species falls under and that are used as a basis for scientific classification are the simplest way to separate them. Where did eels come from on Earth is the subject that has perplexed scientists for hundreds of years. The best assumption made by Aristotle was that they spontaneously generated. They probably spawned in the Sargasso Sea, close to the Bermuda Triangle for a little additional mystery, according to Danish researcher Johannes Schmidt. He conducted comprehensive biological studies over a century ago and discovered a large number of baby eels here, which led him to deduce that they must hatch nearby. However, no adjacent sightings of eggs or adult eels reproducing were ever made. So, up until this point, the question remained unsolved. The European eel, which was one meter in length, that locals were familiar with originated in a subtropical sea up to 10,000 kilometers distant. The greatest brains in history lacked the wonderful technology that our team possessed. Pop up with the aid of satellite archival tags, a relatively new kind of monitoring technology, scientists are now able to map the movements of marine animals in a way that was previously not conceivable. The tags keep track of the creature's movements, including their location, speed, and even depth of dive. The tags then separate and float to the surface, where they may send information back to the curious scientists. 
The amazing migration of the European eel is still a mystery. The same breeding grounds as the eels on the mainland are used by even the eels in backyard ponds, which can slide down land to the sea with just a little rain. Eels have been known to scale even the tall dam walls. But how do they know where to go? How do they pick the hour? Australia is home to some renowned eels as well. Most of us wouldn't even be aware of them because they like to keep to themselves. However, with the amount of rain and flooding, there's a possibility you'll find one soon that I decided that now would be a good time to present 5 facts about eels, including those that are specific to Australia. We thought this would be an interesting opportunity to present 5 eels related facts. Number 1. In Australia, they have a wonderful immigrant history. Even though their voyage is not quite as long as that of the European eel, Australia's short-finned eels make a significant migration. Researchers from the Arthur Ryla Institute and the Gunditch Murring Traditional Owner Aboriginal Corporation used satellite tracking tags to chart the migration of 16 eels from Port Phillip Bay, off the coast of Melbourne, to the Coral Sea, outside the Great Barrier Reef, in research that was published the previous year. Some individuals covered nearly 3,000 miles in just five months. It's a difficult road. The tags revealed that some eels used currents to their advantage and avoided predators by diving to approximately 1,000 meters below the ocean's surface. At least five of the tracked eels were consumed by sharks or whales, thus not all of them were successful. Number 2. Eels are adept at navigating obstacles. When you think about it, there are quite a few barriers separating freshwater inland from the coast. Numerous wetlands and swamps that once provided safe passage have been filled in and replaced by farms, dams, and cities. Eels nevertheless find a way. Their capacity to breathe through their skin is one of their distinguishing characteristics, making even the smallest drain or puddle-soaked lawn passable to them. Urban lore claims that eels have been observed making their way back to the ocean by slithering through urban gutters, athletic fields, or across fountains on university campuses. Number 3. Eels are skilled transformers. Imagine having to experience puberty four or five times, each time with more pronounced physical changes. Then you'd have a pretty good idea of what being an eel is like. Eels that migrate must transition from a salty fish to a freshwater fish and back again, which results in extraordinary life cycles. They spawn in the Sargasso or Coral Sea and begin life as tiny larvae before developing into transparent, glass eels. Then, at around one year old, they transform into darker, elvers, as they migrate back to fresh water, where they finally reach adulthood and become the eels that reside in our rivers, lakes, and dams. When the time is right, they undergo their final transition into silver eels, which are lean, mean, migratory machines. Their skulls become pointed and streamlined, and their eyes enlarge. In order to make room for larger gonads, which are better for spawning, they cease eating as well. Number 4. Sigmund Freud loved eels as well. In relation to gonads, Sigmund Freud, yes, that Freud from psychology, devoted the first years of his academic career to figuring out how eels reproduce. Unfortunately for Freud and the eels, dissecting an eel and looking at its internal reproductive organs is the only method to determine whether it is a male or a female. Freud conducted hundreds of dissections, but he hardly ever discovered male eels. It turns out that this is the case since eels often don't acquire reproductive organs until they are at least 10 years old. Number 5. Eels have extremely lengthy lifespans. In fact, some eels can live for almost 50 years, proving that these long fish do really have long lives. A Swedish man claimed that his garden eel lived to be 155 years old, and another eel was said to have reached the age of 85 in a Swedish aquarium. Eels spend the first few years of their lives traveling back to fresh water from their spawning sites and the last few years traveling back out to sea. They only perform this spawning once before passing away. We still know a great deal about eels all around the world. However, recent satellite research, like that presented this week, brings the puzzle pieces closer to being put together. For the way we manage eel populations, this has important ramifications. The European eel, Anguilla anguilla, has declined by up to 95% during the past 50 years, making it a critically endangered species. The tracking abilities of Australian eels are unknown. Understanding where and how animals breed enables us to safeguard critical habitats and identify ways to facilitate rather than obstruct their migration. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like and comment below.